what i'll try to do in the next uh, few minutes or so is discuss about the physiological role of steroids the various um, uh, steroid preparations and and the magnitude of the problem of steroid induced hyperglycemia uh, the mechanisms that are involved and particularly uh, and the management uh, algorithms and how we should go about with the management so steroids basically uh, were uh, introduced in uh, about more than 70 years back and uh, in 1950 uh, the nobel prize in physiology was jointly awarded to edward Calvin Kendall uh, Richardson and uh, Philip Schwarzer uh, and and uh, they were uh, you know they 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 were they were credited with discovering the steroids and that has actually brought about a revolutionary change in the management of many disorders as we know steroids are used uh, not only for replacement in adrenal insufficiency but also for ma- mainly for the anti inflammatory effects and also for hemodynamic stability so a lot of conditions uh, as you can see the list uh, whether you you look at any any sort of uh, 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 organ organ uh, disorder or any specialist will be using uh, steroids for management of m- many many conditions and so therefore it's important that we understand that steroids uh, what they do to hyperglycemia and how they uh, how they bring about hyperglycemia and, and what we should do about managing such a such a problem so if you look at the uh, maj- mainly the, how the steroids work they they bind to receptors present in the cytoplasm and then this receptor th- this steroid receptor uh, complex goes into the nucleus and there they bring about uh, uh, through various mechanisms they activate uh, activate the production of uh, the the uh, regu- i mean the synthesis of various proteins which may have effects on on um, inflammation and uh, ma- many other processes in the body and uh, th- th- this actually list out that uh, you know the the, the various uh, proteins which are uh, which are which are regulated by steroids have an effect on the immune functions and metabolic functions also as you can see p par gamma tyrosine uh, amino transferase and and pc ppck glucose 6 phosphatase these are the ones which actually uh, in, uh, have a inf- impact on glucose metabolism then there are other effects on bone and endo- other endocrine uh, diso- uh, conditions and in the net effect that we see clinically what we see is that uh, steroids cause uh, uh, cause uh, increase in blood sugar they reduce inflammation retain sodium in the body regulate metabolism through various uh, various of these uh, uh, processes that we have seen they reduce calcium absorption and 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 also reduce immunity so uh, the various the myriad effects of steroids are are seen and therefore there are a lot of side effects which became quite obvious right from the time steroids were introduced the side effects uh, became very very soon uh, known and uh, and 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 uh, despite the side effects uh, the steroids remain crucial and life saving medications and uh, because they have several anti inflammatory effects coming to the role of steroids in causing dysglycemia if you look at the overall use of steroids we can say 0.9% of general population may be using corticosteroids for some reason or the other and uh, we see that the highest usage is in older ages and nearly one quarter of those who consume steroids do it for more than 6 months these are this is data from the usage of medications and uh, and 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 uh, what we see is that uh, steroid induced hyperglycemia may precipitate the appearance of uh, they, they they cause lot of effects uh, uh, precipitating the diabetes or it may be uh, and, and non diabetic individuals may 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 normalize the blood glucose levels once steroids are stopped but there are many individuals who in whom it may precipitate the development of diabetes and if you look at the incidence of hyperglycemia after um, uh, after the use of steroids it said that it is it is seen that more than 50% of those who use steroids develop uh, develop uh, uh, blood glucose levels more than 200 uh, mg per dl and up to 40% uh, of patients with pre diabetes i mean this this uh, the, the condition they use is neuropathy without a glycemic disorder this is probably a pre diabetes or or you know dysglycemia uh, almost 40% of them uh, developed uh, developed uh, diabetes after taking steroids patient with respiratory disorders also have a high occurrence of uh, of uh, dysglycemia after steroid use and also particularly those undergoing organ transplantation so steroid induced hyperglycemia can be i mean those patients who have aggravation of hyperglycemia uh, with pre existing diabetes those in whom diabetes unmasked by the steroids that is they were having some pre diabetes or some other dysglycemia earlier uh, and the use of steroids unmasked their diabetes 
and then there could be another category of patients where they uh, the appearance of uh, uh, so, uh, they have uh, the the glucose corticoid induced diabetes is precipitated by the use of steroids so this is these are the three broad categories we could say of pay, of people who use steroids and uh, so we can see that it can uh, precipitate the uh, new onset of diabetes more than two thirds of patients who develop hyperglycemia develop it within one to two days of using steroids so very very soon after starting steroids this happens so we should be vigilant of uh, monitoring glucose levels right from the time the steroids are started so that we can identify the hyperglycemia which occurs otherwise many times it is this is this is not done and people are identify hyperglycemia many many days after starting steroids and during that period the person is at high risk of problems uh, because of the hyperglycemia so and the predominant problem that is there is postprandial hyperglycemia so majority of people have postprandial hyperglycemia so just doing the fasting may underestimate the incidence of hyperglycemia so and then the pattern of excursion however depends upon the type of glucocorticoid that is used its dose and regime and replacement doses when they when steroids are used in small doses like replacement doses 7.5 to uh, milligrams or lower it may not cause so much of hyperglycemia those with moderate doses like 7.5 to 30 milligrams may have higher incidence and those with more than 30 milligrams per day uh, very certainly very very often develop go on to develop hyperglycemia so the predictors of new onset diabetes with steroid use could be uh, listed as the dose and duration of steroid treatment the age of the patient older ages more likely high those who are obese are more likely previous glucose intolerance and uh, and and those who have demonstrated some degree of insulin resistance those who had a family history and and particularly some some leukocyte antigens are uh, hla types uh, particularly those who undergo transplant they, who had uh, who have hla typing some of the hla typings are are predisposing to uh, to the development of steroid induced diabetes gender may not play important role and uh, and 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 uh, early withdrawal of corticosteroids whatever the reason for which we use early withdrawal is has uh, is good in terms of preventing the uh, or regre- uh, or bring down the glucose levels to normal so this again lists out the uh, risk factors uh, presence of hypertension presence of i mean those who are smoking those uh, are more likely those who have got impaired renal function and and those who have got um, uh, um, uh, specific uh, single neuter- nucleotide polymorphisms are also at risk so these are all the risk factors that are there and uh, the important issue is that if you uh, why do we need to screen patients for steroid induced hyperglycemia it's important because uh, the the problem of hyperglycemia itself uh, because Because of the problem, the high prevalence of hyperglycemia itself, which may, which may prolong the hospital stay, which may worsen the outcomes. Secondly, steroids uh, increase the risk of infections, and uh, uh, so these are the major effects. And uh, control of hyperglycemia in any situation, because we have got studies which have shown that you know when you look at patients hospitalized for for various reasons and look at hyperglycemia, those with transient hyperglycemia, even new onset hyperglycemia or transient hyperglycemia, the correction of hyperglycemia is very important in such situations. So even for steroid induced hyperglycemia correction of hyperglycemia is more important than worrying about the worrying about whether they are going to develop diabetes or not it is important that we correct the hyperglycemia manage the hyperglycemia effectively and that is going to uh, improve the outcomes so just to show you the mechanisms what is happening steroids have multiple uh, reasons they they uh, through through their action actions at the um, on the um, um, uh, protein synthesis they decrease protein synthesis increase protein degradation and they also decrease the glycogen synthesis and in the liver what happens is they they increase the activity of this pcp uh, uh, phosphoenol pyruvate kinase carboxy kinase which is a important enzyme regulating gluconeogenesis that is upregulated in the liver so increasing gluconeogenesis it is down is it network issue in the adipocyte uh excuse me any any uh, sh- am i audible yeah so i think uh, this is uh, the contrast that happens in the liver there is increase in activity of this gluconeogenesis in the in the muscle the in the adipocyte the pcp kinase is reduced and uh, because of this what happens is that there is increased free fatty acid available which is going into uh, gluconeogenesis in the liver so the various mechanisms are listed here but suffice to say that there is increase in insulin resistance and decrease in insulin secretion from the from the beta cells in the pancreas to different mechanisms which are causing the uh, hyperglycemia in people who are on steroids now it's important to understand 
what is the what is the type of steroids they're taking short acting steroids have a uh, have a different effect intermediate acting steroids have different effects so these are the intermediate acting steroids and long acting steroids like dexamethasone and all that uh, have a different pattern of hypoglycemia which is shown here so the short acting ones like uh, they have an onset of hypoglycemia within one hour peaks at three hours and resolves in six hours so just like you as you can see uh, you know we are familiar to seeing the insulin profiles uh, the action profiles of insulin so similarly you see with short acting steroids this is the uh, this is the type of hypoglycemia that is produced uh, type of glucose profile that is produced with intermediate acting steroids like prednisolone and methyl prednisolone this is the type of glucose profile produced peak action peak uh, in, in glucose levels at eight hours and uh, a, a resolution in 12 to 16 hours and long acting steroids uh, have a longer duration of action like this longer duration of hyperglycemia so it's important as you can see uh, all all of you all of us can understand that you know for this type of type of steroid a short acting insulin would be very good for this type of steroid a, 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 i mean a insulin like nph will be very good which has a 12 to 14 hour action uh, uh, while for these a longer acting basal analog like glargine or or degludec would be good for this type of uh, type of steroid use so clearly understanding this is important because you know we can understand what type of insulin is going to be particularly useful for managing such hyperglycemia now important that when a patient is admitted and started on steroids you need to monitor the cbg levels I and mean the capillary blood glucose levels consistently if they are consistently below a 180 you may you may stop testing but if they are going going beyond 3 200 then you need to uh, start treatment in known cases of diabetes you know if the cbg is more than 200 then testing should be increased to more than three times per day and treatment should be intensified accordingly for those who are not having i mean and uh, those who are on on a single dose of prednisone as we've seen that's an intermediate acting uh, uh, steroid and uh, it best is treated with nph which could be given in the morning and intermediate acting uh, nph at the same time as a steroid ingestion may may be the best form to manage hyperglycemia and people who are on prednisone and this is the commonest type of steroid that is used in most of our patients most of patients who are using it for anti-inflammatory purposes for those who are on uh, so you can actually calculate the dose also for those who are on prednisone and methyl prednisone as i said once a day use nph 0.5 units per milligram of glucocorticoid that is used and give it along with the glucocorticoid in the morning for those who are using more than two times per day maybe you'll require a little higher dose uh, but you may need to give it twice daily again uh, you may need to give it twice daily same dose 0.5 unit per milligram uh, of glucocorticoid that it may range from 0.25 to 1 unit but uh, average is this this is what you can start with uh, and and uh, when you're using uh, uh, longer acting steroids like dexamethasone if you're using nph then you require larger doses of nph or you may prefer to use any of the basal uh, the newer basal analogs which have which have a longer duration action when you're looking at uh, hydrocortisone if you're trying to use trying to use nph you require smaller doses of nph uh, with uh, and and, and uh, whether you use it od or bt you require smaller doses of nph given along with the steroid now uh, when you are looking at patients who are on on multiple dose of hydrocortisone on which you need, you need to uh, use um, appropriate therapy with mdi regime maybe the treatment of choice or or you may be given uh, you can sometimes use uh, premixed also but most important is uh, most uh, suitable is a basal bolus regime in such patients now uh, if a patient is on basal insulin consider switching to the morning administration and increasing dose of uh, by two to four increment units increments uh, every 24 to 48 hours particularly uh, in those who are getting this methyl uh, pulse uh, therapy in such patients it may be good to give this basal insulin in the morning and uh, sometimes when uh, the there is persistent hyperglycemia you may switch to iv insulin infusion for a short duration of time then once the uh, and once you have a estimation of the total daily dose then you can switch back to basal bolus therapy now this is again uh, this is the uh, chart showing all the different insulins and what where they're particularly useful they're particularly useful i mean um, uh, you can use nph particularly for uh, for a short acting intermediate acting glucocorticoid uh, prandial bolus insulins for uh, for short acting glucocorticoids basal bolus therapy is used in very severe hyperglycemia not uh, particularly for any particular type of glucocorticoid but when there is severe hyperglycemia so this is how you could divide you could decide what type of uh, uh, insulin to be used uh, depending on the type of uh, steroid that is being used 
but important thing is that don't use sliding scale because this is not this is going to cause confusion you need to use uh, basal insulin and uh, uh, appropriate doses of bolus insulin depending on the steroid that is being used and that and and that is going to the dose of steroid that is being used and for the duration of time that it is being used once it is being tapered we'll just discuss about that that a little later now coming to the management with OADs sometimes you may be able to manage with OADs also when uh, you have a patient who has been quite stable who doesn't have very significant hyperglycemia uh, who are not on non-insulin therapy earlier also there you can see that short acting uh, 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 sulfonylurea like glycoside is a very good uh, agent which matches the action profile of uh, this prednisone just like we are speaking about NPH glycoside here matches that action profile and you can say that for every uh, 5 milligram of prednisone and you may use a few 40 milligram of glycoside could be matching the requirement for about 5 milligrams of prednisolone if patients are uh, so this is how you would do it a maximum is one one time dosing is good enough we can you can go up to a maximum of 240 milligrams before breakfast so that's the usual uh, tendency that you may use for 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 uh, controlling uh, uh, or with oral anti-diabetic agents intermediate acting insulins may be added uh, in addition if required if they are not controlled on OADs and uh, hyperglycemia if it continues in the late evening or overnight ad adding insulin may be particularly useful now uh, current evidence uh, I mean there's not much of evidence this is the RSSJ guideline which I'm uh, quoting here this was brought out in 2016-17 so there was not much of evidence available on GLP-1 RA or SGLT2 inhibitor so they, they, they did not uh, speak about these two these agents but if you look at the recent uh, evidence uh, recent data that has come out from the covid time when a lot of hyper, uh, steroid induced hyperglycemia was being managed uh, people have used uh, uh, use use different agents like um, like um, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors have been uh, have been used in some scenarios and pa patients were stable. Some of the studies we have seen where dapagliflozin was used, the DARE 19 study and other studies have shown that there was no problem with the use of these agents, but uh, they had their limitations and and they, they could be used in some of the stable patients. Metformin was also found to be a good agent in some of these patients. So I think uh, and, uh, and and particularly the DP4 inhibitors were particularly found to be uh, uh, particularly effective effective in some of these studies. The target uh, uh, glucose level should be maintained between 140 to 180 for majority of the patients in, even in the ICU you would look at maintaining between 140 to 180 being the ideal. In the wards you may look at uh, a preprandial uh, pre level of less than 140 and a postprandial level of less than 180. So, uh, so this should be the target and when you are tapering the steroids uh, you should see that the dose of anti hyperglycemic agents need to be tapered accordingly. A weekly reduction of dose of 5 mg of prednisolone requires a reduction in the total uh, dose of insulin by about 20 to 25 percent reduction or a dose reduction of glycoside. If, if you have been using glycoside, you can reduce it by 40 mg every time you bring down the dose. And normoglycemia can be observed in many patients after stopping the steroids, but however, we should follow them up and uh, see that we retest after 12 weeks to uh, see that the patient is, is back to normal because they could still continue to have hyperglycemia. Important thing is to reassure and reinforce uh, to the patients, educate them and see that they uh, screen again because this, this chart shows that, I mean, uh, tells us how we should go about with, uh, with in terms of People who have known diabetics, you look at uh, uh, titrating the dose of uh, drugs or insulin rapidly once you are titrated, I mean, reducing the dose of steroids and stopping them, encourage, I mean, I mean, see that they are educated about this and they are monitoring frequently. For those who are not diabetics, who become normal, whose blood glucose levels become normal after stopping steroids, you should still test them after 12 weeks to assess whether they, 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 they are, their hyperglycemia is persisting or not and they should be educated about uh, subsequent testing maybe every every six months they could be testing so as to uh, ensure that they are uh, they're maintaining normal glycemia so it's important i would like to conclude by saying that you know uh, it's very important when we're using steroids to to see that we uh, follow a, a, a use it for a clear indication use the appropriate dose for the appropriate period of time because there are several uh, side of, i mean uh, adverse effects of steroids hyperglycemia being one of them and it is important that we we as um, uh, as uh, diabetologists endocrinologists and physicians who are managing people with hyperglycemia should understand the type of steroid that is used and match it with the appropriate therapy and and see that uh, we are effectively maintaining the glucose levels of our patients in the normal range thank you all for the patient hearing i would be happy to answer any questions later